You are nothing but ego. I know that's not what you want to hear, but it's true. It's all illusion. It all belongs to the goddess. Nothing is yours. But don't worry, it's not that bad. I break all this down for you in this video where I discuss the nature of the self and how you can understand astrology in that context. Hey, it's Sam, and I'm making this video from on top of the roof in my flat here in India. You can see the jungles behind me, the laundry. I'm hanging my laundry up here as well. And I'm talking today about um, something that's really important, and it has to do with the ego. I've been doing a lot of study, re-studying some beautiful things since I've been here in India, mainly it brings me back to a point of origin in my own spiritual evolution and development in this lifetime. And it has to do with non-duality, um, Kashmir Shaivism, Sankhya philosophy, the structure of the self and the ego in f a formal yogic um, Vedantic setting. That might sound like a lot. but. You should understand, or I'll just let you know that this is actually, or that is actually my background. I started doing meditation and scriptural, spiritual study in the early 80s, 1983 I started. And of course, that's more than 30 years ago, um, 35 years ago, right? I was about 20 years old, so that shows you how old I am. And what I did then wasn't just study, but it was practice, it was meditation. Um, a lot of Shaivite Shiva meditation and also study of the, you know, the understanding of how these non-dualistic and dualistic traditions um, talk about life and existence and why we're here. Not just why we're here, but why anything is here, how it got here, who we are as an individual in the midst of it and all of that. And, you know, to me, this is the whole crux of life itself. And astrology starts at that point. It starts there for me. And I would say that it should start there for everyone to some extent. Not just every individual, but every astrologer for sure. Um, and you'll see and notice the nature of an astrologer or astrology teacher's awareness and understanding of astrology based on their awareness and understanding of those things. And you should understand that in this way of looking at the world, Everything about you or everything that you think of you, of as you is what they call the ego. All of it is ego. Ego is simply being separated from the source. Everything except the pure source, the non-dualistic Shiva Shakti, Thing that's not of this world everything else in duality especially personalized through the matrix of your identity all of that is ego so basically you might hear me talk about these things in videos and whatnot and hear me say well the ego this the ego that and you might think well you know I don't really have a big ego in fact I'm actually pretty humble and you know my ego da 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 no 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 no. Everything is the ego that you identify as your separate self, which pretty much includes everything. Your entire life revolves around the ego, your ego, your separateness. And it's that separation from the true self that is the basis of 
karma. And astrology starts there, beyond incarnation in this lifetime. Astrology starts on that causal astral level. That's where it starts, reaching back into past lives and analyzing and understanding, hopefully, the evolution of the different life principles that have pulled you here. How much you have evolved you, the ego, I should say, your ego, because all of it is ego. How much your ego has interrupted the pure self and has forced the separation from spirit that is the true nature of all existence, the non-dual existence, which is the Shiva, Shakti, Parama Shiva, beyond anything with form or attribute or power or will or time or bliss and happiness. And there are several ways to really encounter this separation from spirit. I'm going to be talking about some of those in future videos and in, in some upcoming videos because I'm really, I'm reconnecting to it at a deeper level. This is one of the biggest things that has come as a result of my trip to India recently. It's just very much descended upon me, this awareness and this recollection, this refocusing of my attention and energy back on that non-dual state. And the structure of how that happens. So essentially, we are covered in Maya, in illusion. And this whole idea that you're, first of all, that you're separate from the source and that part of you is actually joined the source, is all part of the Maya. The reason I'm making this video today, one of the things was to say and to kind of reiterate and understand so that you get that ego is all, basically your entire life revolves around your ego in the sense of Shaivism and Sankhya philosophy, it's all ego. And the, uh, it's ego wrapped in an illusion of self. The self wrapped in the illusion of the ego, however you want to look at it. Think of the part of you that wants to live forever, that thinks this separate creature, this separate body is you. How about the part of you that gets upset and has a strong emotion about something and feels like that emotion is real and that it's you and that it's valid and that it's legitimate to fight about it, to defend it, to make a big deal. Think of everything you do in your life that's important. It's important that I do this. It's real. I have to do this. How much of that is your life? <laughs> All of it? <laughs> All of that is the ego. That's all ego. So you want to understand what's meant by the term ego. This is the reason I'm being so intentional. When I mention ego or when you hear the term ego mentioned in a spiritual sense, that's what is being referred to. For all intents and purposes, your entire life is your ego, revolves around your ego and your ego trying to evolve toward non-duality. Your ego and these attributes and qualities of the ego trying to merge with higher and higher balanced states of equanimity in the mind. And yoga and Ayurveda, these are two sciences that 
help us to cultivate a calm and peaceful state of mind calm and, so that our ego calms down so that we're not so attached because this is what happens this is what the ego does is it we become attached to this limitation these limiting structures even divine beings they incarnate and they have an ego because the physical body needs to take care of itself and that's what the ego is there to do to help us maintain our life in the body but a divine being is not attached to it they don't see that body as themselves they don't see that ego as themselves they don't own those emotions they don't get their feelings hurt and lash out and take things personally and all that they're not identified with their body and their life any more than you're identified with your car like if someone insults your car you don't say oh they're insulting me you're like well if you don't like my car so what it's kind of a good analogy because it's basically like your body is sort of like the car you're driving in this lifetime it's sort of like you know it's it, it's a good analogy and so what winds up happening and I I mentioned astrology at the part of at the, at the beginning and astrologers and how I think the more astrologers understand this the more balanced they can be and the more ultimate light they can shed on your karma and on your life because if they don't understand this themselves or to whatever degree they've forgotten it or that they simply don't get it or don't know it then they're going to be endlessly hooked into the same problems and dramas that you're hooked into <laughs> right so what I mean to say is that you know and I, I do it and I see it all the time I don't do it frankly as much as other astrologers because again my basis is in this awareness this is where I started so I don't necessarily judge good or bad if someone is married or not married or if they get what they want or don't get what they want oh I wanted this thing and I got it I'm like so what <laughs> and you're still not happy so what you have a happy marriage okay I know what that means that means it's not torturing you that's what happy is that's what happiness is through the ego I already know what it is a successful happy marriage quote means that it's 51% okay and 49% miserable <laughs> that's most of life I'm being cynical but it doesn't mean you you know of course that's not totally accurate but what it means is that there's only so much happiness we get in this world and just because it's successful and we're together it doesn't mean that there isn't you know that the soul is not still here learning something through that interaction there's always going to be some give and take oh I had kids I'm so happy it's so happy we're also happy right okay I get it you have kids and it's another challenge and all of the victories and and defeats are all swirling around in this matrix and so you'll hear astrologers constantly their whole point of view in fact many times is to just help you get what you want be happy and there you go that's what it's for help us be happy okay we all want to be happy I get it but that's not why we're here we're not here to be happy that's not the point and again even if we're quote happy like it's some static state being successful within a certain norm is a relative proposition in life and you know for instance happiness is the is the Ananda Shakti of Shiva covered with Maya bliss plus Maya equals happiness and we try to chase it we try to get it but Ananda bliss is the state of the soul I'm gonna talk about these states and how Maya covers but the bliss state is your true state happiness is bliss covered in Maya just like pure self chit Shakti 
And then Chit Shakti covered in Maya is the limited self, the separate self, right? And so you have these five Shaktis that are covered and I don't care what area of life, if you get some happiness, hallelujah. But again, it's always gonna be a wavering thing. The point isn't to try to get as much good stuff as we can. Of course, that's important. We all wanna succeed. But it's actually to try to unfold consciousness. That's why we're here. And so, what I mentioned is that if someone is not aware of this, or however aware they are of it, they're going to get hooked into the drama and the problems of a client or of someone who is just sort of deluded by their karmas. And like, why can't I get this? Why can't I have this? Da -da. And then the astrologer's like, okay, well, let me help you get it. Do this remedy. Do this thing. It, don't worry. It'll get better here. Then you'll be happy. And it's just getting into this, just increasing the whole false game. Increasing the whole rat in a maze quality of life on earth and of maya, of illusion. Instead, when there's perspective, you can remind the client, and you should remind the client, of the benefits of what they've done. The fact that they haven't been married, for instance, they haven't been married and have kids or whatever, has freed them up to do all kinds of things that people who got married and had kids haven't been able to do, for example. See it all the time. We tend to focus on the thing we didn't do, the thing we always wanted that we couldn't really do very well, but actually, we did other things. And this is the soul's purpose and power in this lifetime for this person. There is no judgment about, well, because you didn't get married, you weren't successful at this, or it was bad, or didn't have kids, it was bad, or didn't do this kind of work, or whatever it is. So instead of playing that good-bad game, understanding that all of these games are games of the ego, And the last thing is, again, really then understanding the transcendent quality of life, your transcendent nature. It's a great relief when you understand your, when you at least understand that who you really are is a transcendent being. Then you can stop acting like you're going to find this static version of happiness one day and it's you, and this is who you are, this unique person. And in fact, this is like focusing on trying to preserve a wave that rises and falls in the ocean. We spend so much time using astrology to try to understand ourselves, me, who am I, my ego, my, you know, again, literally, it's my ego. When people are like, Oh, I have this and my this and my that. It's literally saying my ego is this. My ego revolves around that. Whether it's powerful or not, good or bad, that's, that is what it is. Instead of understanding that this is, you know, this facet of my consciousness has to do with that, but universalizing these things toward the ultimate rather than trying to pull everything down toward you as this unique snowflake, this unique faceted diamond, and hanging on to that, trying to keep that alive, trying to preserve that which is already dying, trying to preserve the wave which is going to recede into the ocean, hanging on to that and trying to get to know that, but what about me? What about you? You're, you are an illusion your ego, you, what you're calling you, is not real. It is an illusion. <laughs> Who you really are is not that. Again, it's like trying to stop the wave from receding back into the ocean. I've been doing some videos by the ocean and we see how the waves rise and fall. But even on a wave, there are little microwaves and they come and they go and they recede. They pop up and then they dissolve back into the ocean. 
We're not here to know our nature as the wave. We're here to know our nature as the ocean. You're the ocean, not the wave. We focus on our little life that rises, and then while it's risen for this brief second of that quick in cosmic time, just like a wave that we're watching on the ocean rises and it's gone as soon as we see it, our life is the same way. We focus on all the little facets of that wave. Ooh, if you look to the right, it's got this little bump and this little thing and it's this tall and this and that. We, like we're focusing on ourselves, and then the next second it disappears back into the ocean. Make that shift in awareness and try to understand or approach astrology from that place once and see the shift that happens. Rather than seeing it as, how can I understand me, me, this illusion? Help me understand the illusion even better. The real power and glory of astrology is, of course, a way to understand, you know, you. But then you realize, okay, what's who I really am is this eminent being. And then you start to really look at the evolutionary, the highest qualities of those planets, of those divine forces. And that's who you really are. You're actually, the closer you get to that non-dual state, Right below the non-dual state is the highest state of the Garahas, the highest state of the planets, the highest quality of the planets. Before Maya comes and creates the ego around your karma, the culmination of all those energies, that's who you really are. When that becomes the focus, rather than all of the facets of the ego or other people's ego, or again, trying to win some game here on Earth that's just... Of course, it's, it's important. It's important to win the game because we're playing the game, not because winning or losing it is that important. Sometimes it's more important to lose the game. Sometimes it's better for our soul to lose the game, right? So again, astrologers are always trying to help people win the game. If I see someone playing a losing game, I'll tell them the game is, you're playing a losing game. I know you want this thing, but you know what? You want it because of this part of your ego. And they're like, oh, you're right. I'm like, yeah. That's why even if you get it, you don't enjoy it, right? Right. Okay, so why you keep playing a losing game? So anyway rambling a little bit maybe this was a kind of loose form video because I've been really delving a lot into and returning to my roots in Shaivism and non-dualism and how that breaks out into Sankhya philosophy which is basically life in duality and life through the body and evolving higher and higher states of consciousness and how astrology fits into that. That's really what all my work is about. So I'm gonna be doing some more videos more specifically about those things. And wanted to make this first video because something in me just loves <laughs> telling people that, you know what? <laughs> it's all ego. And most of it's not worth fighting for if any of it is it's all it's all going to be taken because it doesn't belong to you this is the last thing i'll say all of this belongs to the goddess including your body your mind your mind is created by the goddess maya the goddess spinning maya so that you could be born so that you could be born in this matrix to do what you're here doing. The goddess created this Maya, this world, to protect you and to give you a platform through which to evolve. What do I mean by that? But it's all hers, it's not yours. None of it is yours. It's not even yours, let alone you. <laughs> it's not even yours. You don't own any of it. You don't own your body. 
You don't even own your mind. <laughs> she does. <laughs> <laughs>